In the last video, we did a one sample t-test on quiz number one to see whether the average quiz score was different than an eight. Let's say what I want to know now is whether quiz scores improved over the course of the semester. Between quiz one and two, did people get better at answering whatever the questions were on the quiz? So to do this, I'm going to use a dependent t-test which is what happens when I get two variables from the same people and I want to compare them against one another, right? So here I have another set where I have two means, mean of quiz number one, mean of quiz number two. And I want to see if those means are the same or different. So let's go up to t-tests and I'm going to choose paired samples t-test, which is another common way of talking about a dependent t-test paired you can think of because we're going to uh, pair people's scores on two different variables but but just know that this is the same as a dependent t-test so we get another window that seems familiar we get a blank paired samples t-test table going on down here and i want to compare quiz one to quiz two so i can scoot quiz one over into our window you see that enters as one of the variables and then quiz number two I'll scoot over as well. So you can see these are both appearing on the same row, which means I'm comparing quiz one to quiz two. This is how things are gonna roll. Once we look at our options again, we'll stick with a student's t-test. Hypothesis, you can see again, we have decisions to make about whether we're making a two-tailed or a one-tailed test. Uh, here, uh, let's keep it as the default two-tailed test. Uh, if I don't ever specify in a homework, you can assume that I'm asking for a two-tailed test. So here we're saying that measure one is unequal to measure two. So quiz one it, on average will be different from quiz two. And here we can see those results. Uh, and there is looking like a significant difference in performance. So our uh, statistic, which again is our T score, our T statistic is negative 5.64 which just by looking at it already looks pretty good that's extremely different from zero based on what we've been seeing degrees of freedom again are 99 n minus one and here our p-value is so small that Jamovi doesn't want to give us the exact number because it could be 0 0.00000001 or whatever it happens to be so if your p-value is ever less than 0 0.001 this is what it will show you just that in some way it is less than this that's all we need to know to know that we reject the null hypothesis we found a significant difference because p is so small right there's less than a point uh what, what is that 0.01 percent chance that we would have found this difference in quiz scores just as a fluke right so it's a, definitely a significant difference we can again choose effect size for additional statistics. We get our Cohen's D of negative 0.564, which we would call a medium effect size. So a medium effect, a medium difference uh, in quiz scores between number one and number two. Uh, descriptives, we can check here and we get the mean of quiz one, which we already knew was 8.24. And we see that mean of quiz two is 9.02. So it's an improvement. Uh, from quiz one to quiz two, and a significant improvement at that. Let's go ahead and just sort of play around with some of these other settings, and you can play around with more of them as you do your own uh, poking around the program. But if I hit descriptives plots, now it's generating a visual interpretation of what's going on. And I'll be the first to admit, this is not the the most beautiful way of graphing <laughs> the results of a study like this, but I can see clearly that quiz one has a mean. That circle there is the mean, which you can see here, uh, is the mean compared to the mean of quiz two. Those are different from each other. These lines on either side, sometimes you're going to see those when you look at the results of statistical tests like this. Those are called, called error bars, uh, or in this case, they're confidence intervals. It's basically just saying it's like a margin of error, right? To say that for quiz one, even though the average was an 8.25 or so, it fell in a range that would have gone from about an eight to an eight and a half, right? So I can't tell exactly perfectly always and forever what people's score would be on this quiz, 
but it's usually going to fall in this range. And since these bars don't overlap, that's one clue into them being different. So I, I just highlight that to make the point of it. We, we don't need to go into any more depth than that, but I just wanted to show you what that looks like because you may see it again in other classes or when you look at results from any kind of study. This is not uncommon to have these kinds of error bars. The critical thing, though, here is our T statistic, our degrees of freedom, and our p-value. Those are showing us that we have a significant difference between quiz one and quiz two. Once again, any of this stuff you can copy and paste by right-clicking, choosing copy, and then going into a uh, Word document. I'll go ahead and hit Control V on my PC, and I have now that there. So if I ask for the results from Jamovi, this is what I'm looking for, just giving me all that information in a tidy table. So that's how to do a dependent t-test or a paired samples t-test in Jamovi.